Okay, so <laughs> walking my way into the actual church itself, I noticed a great disadvantage. My height does not provide for greater visibility when I walk forward because then it's only that fills my vision are all the people who are taller than me. And the only people who aren't taller than me are children, okay? So <laughs> I had to position myself in such a fashion that I could actually still see what was going on from some kind of a vantage point. And that took me quite a while to coordinate myself towards. And finally, I did find one that was actually kind of catty corner, like the third or fourth, I call them thrones, back, I don't know, chair, they're really just chairs, they're wooden chairs. Um, and, you know, I could put my purse there and sometimes I would sit and sometimes I wouldn't or whatever, lean on it if I needed, what have you. And I could see very clearly what was going on. There are on each side um, icons, three on each side, so six in total. And, um, well, I wasn't going to go past them without venerating them too, so I was busy taking care of that. And I noticed, and this was very, this is very complimentary to them, I was very pleased to see that attending over to the other side was not, <gasps> okay, so that if a gentleman came over to do that, he was there for that purpose, and that was just fine. And there wasn't going to be a, because ah! that's what I'm used to, you know, growing up separated. And um, that's one thing. When I when I watch um, men venerate, there's, there's something very particularly beautiful, because there's such a vulnerability um, to watching that part of such an intimate form of graceful, prayerful expression that um, is not provided for in a way to men more often that um, you get to see that tender side of them. Um, and I find that incredibly beautiful and touching. So. It was nice to see everyone, you know, and it's always so busy. Everybody's milling about and doing this and that, right? No one ever gets there on time. Okay, doesn't matter. So then I'm the only person in the church who can't go up for Eucharist. And um, people are looking at me like, really? You're not Orthodox? <laughs> um, yeah, so I was the only one, right? And, um... As I got closer and closer, you know, I saw, you know, very prominently displayed right right there was um, the Evron icon. There were live flowers as a frame around the wooden frame. I, I think they still had the, the cover as well. It was like a blue velvet one. And... Um, See, it was like center stage, you know, center altar really, but whatever. Very prominently in forward. Now, we all had to walk past to get up to Archbishop so that we could kiss the cross. So that was the first time that I walked past her and it, it wasn't, it, <laughs> um, it was unique, okay? The first time just coming to contact. I'll just use the word unique. There's no other word I can say. So I go forward further and um, get to kiss, kiss the cross and smile at my Archbishop, who I adore because of his voice, his voice, his voice is so beautiful. And he's multilingual. I don't even know how many languages the man speaks, but... This is the one who I've said before that he will be speaking in one language or singing in one language and I'll hear two or three at the same time in my head. Um, I, I, 
I don't know how to explain that, but even the first time, and I talked about this before, the first time that I ever heard him, you know, giving, uh, I guess it was an evening Vespers. There was a portion when he was singing that I actually heard and almost responded to. Um, one of the most um, beautiful and reverent and very holy um, sections of uh, daily Jewish prayer. And it's one where we actually prostrate during. And I heard that while he was singing something else in the liturgy. Um, and I had to stop myself from doing that prostration. <laughs> so there's some, there's a lot of things going on when he, when he is, um, serving us. So walk back, da, 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 this and that. And then it's time that all of us are lining up to go venerate the room. So, um, Before it all had started, they, all, all of the priests and the archbishop and everybody had done their venerations too. And getting to see that, like I told you, whenever I see it, I just find that so beautiful and touching. So I knew I wasn't probably going to look very much, but rather I knew I was going forward that I would smell that smell that everyone talks about as this myrrh, right? Now, the funny thing for me that's so confusing is that they call this myrrh, and there is a specific scent to actual myrrh, but this myrrh is scented of roses. Now, being an aromatherapist, you know, a massage therapist, I deal with oils all the time, and I'm quite, I'm quite good at telling what combinations are and can replicate them sometimes pretty well. This was unlike any other rose I have ever smelled. It, it wasn't Bulgarian. It was more similar to a Persian rose, but it also smelled a little bit like carnation. And well, you could see it beating up, uh, yeah, so that was breathtaking and like skin chilling and where you just, huh, it's just electric. I don't, how can I describe? There's just no way I could describe. And then um, <laughs> everybody's lining up afterwards. And there was a lady who was instructing who goes where, right? And so I see them anointing and I think oh I can't go unction I found out later that wasn't the case but I missed it the first time because I didn't know and I didn't think I could go forward so later on after that we left and we went on our way to the bookstore and while we're walking to the bookstore <laughs> um I see a family that's walking and they have all these little cards, you know, of the icon and they have baggies with, you know, Q-tips with the oil. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did I miss this? And they said, well, they're probably you're still doing it. You keep going. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we gotta go back. <laughs> so my friend and I, we went back and we got them. Okay. We received them. I'm so grateful. So thankful. And there's a little story to that, too. But anyhow, went to the bookstore, lovely little bookstore, realized that I had left my wallet at home. <laughs> but my friend was kind enough to forward me a little bit to be able to do what I needed to do and get. And then um, we went back. Now, there are these two side little rooms. And... Um, in the next vlog, I'll tell you about what happened in the side rooms. So thanks for watching. Bright blessings and peace.